a hard, hard play 28 minutes. <laughs> What did you guys see in the lead up to this that made you think you could go inside and have success like you did early in this game? Well, more than anything, like our identity has been and will continue to be about attacking the paint first and, and going inside. And again, when pick and roll, they play the ball screen, two guys come to the basketball. Uh, we felt like there were some opportunities to get Rob and Trey going right away. Our guards did a great job making the reads. Those guys did an exceptional job finishing. and going right at the rim, and, and that set the tone for the whole game. I think when you go in there and have success right away, um, you know, it, it sets you up for future success. Now it opens the drive up more and just uh, continue to open things. So um, it's something we're going to keep focusing on, and, and we're fortunate our guys did the job, you know, right from the start. Having a game plan is one thing, and executing it immediately at that level is a different thing. I mean, have, have you seen that from this group? at times this year, or is this the first time that they've done it at that level? Yeah, I'd say to that level, it's certainly the first time. You know, and when you do it over 40 minutes, it's another thing if you have a good stretch or a good half. And, and to keep that focus mentally uh, as a group that, you know, I think we've got a lot of potential to keep improving, getting better if, if we keep our focus on practice and, and our daily habits. And that was a step for us. It was a step to, to prove to ourselves that we can do that for 40 minutes and keep our focus and be locked in. So. Um, you know, it's it's something we're going to continue to demand as we move forward. TJ, what's a win like this to going forward as you see in two weeks, you went three weeks, whatever it is, you enter the what everybody says, and, and it, it's true, the toughest conference in America. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good win in terms of the confidence and our guys showing that what they can do over 40 minutes. And now, you know, regardless of the next challenge in front of you, you've got to have that same mindset and that same approach. And, you know, it's we've got another opportunity on Sunday, and it's going to come at us quickly. So we've got to have the same intent, the same practice habits. It's great to get up for a rivalry game and have that little bit of extra motivation or excitement. Uh, we need to have that same level of motivation and excitement going into our game Sunday uh, and just keep taking it one practice at a time, one day at a time, and, and getting ready for that next game. TJ, when it comes to defense, we, we like the counting stats, steals, blocks, points off turnovers. But from your position, what were you actually seeing on the court that, that got your guys in position to make those, uh, make those steals, get ahead of the paint, and get 25 points off turnovers? Well, we wanted to have pressure on the basketball. And then off the basketball, we really wanted to load up in those gaps. So when, when they try to drive, that we're in position to get steals, to um, to be disruptive and to make them hesitant as they drive the basketball. And then at the same time, when they throw the ball into the post, you know, with our double team, again, we want to try to make them hesitant. So when they're thinking about going into the paint, there's the risk of a turnover uh, and there's that hesitancy on their mind. And our guys did a great job staying focused um, for the most part and doing that, and not allowing them to get into the paint. And, and that, you know, that prevented them from getting some of the plays offensively that they get most nights out. TJ, how integral was Keyshawn's ability to not only get to the rim and finish, get to the free throw line, shoot well there, hit threes, and just to, in order to, you know, spur this kind of offensive output the rest of the season? Yeah, well, obviously I've, I've, you know, had a history with Keyshawn, knowing him a long time, and, um, you know, told him the night, like, you know, those are the type of games, that's the belief we had in him a long time ago, and uh, that's the standard that, you know, we're looking for night in and night out. He's definitely made progress. I feel like these last three games, he's had six assists or more, each of them. He's shot it well from three. He's getting to the paint. Uh, to me, he's taken a step mentally uh, in terms of staying locked in and staying focused. He's obviously a, a really gifted player. But to me, it's that focus and that concentration and that effort and the intelligence he's bringing to everything He's doing, and then he's doing it over 40 minutes, which is so great to see. Coach, how dynamic does Keyshawn make your backcourt with his ability to attack the rim, his ability to now knock down shots as he gets more confidence there? And it just seems to bring a lot of athleticism to you guys on the defensive end, too. Yeah, it's great to have multiple point guards and multiple playmakers on the court. And, you know, you have to make some tough choices. A lot of teams have one defender that's really good guarding the basketball and, and we're able to put different guys in different spots to attack certain matchups and, and to get in the paint. So when you have multiple guys that can do it, uh, it allows you to get to the foul line more. It allows you to, um, you know, to be the aggressor and keep going back to the paint like we'd like to do. So 
I think it's it's great when those guys are out there together. It's even a you know probably a better dynamic at times when you have three of them and Pav's out there as well, and you got three guys that can get in there. So we'll continue to you know to look at that as as a weapon for us and, and attacking as we move forward. And you briefly talked there um, earlier about having a pre-existing relationship with Keyshawn, and obviously you recruited him to UNLV. Um, going back to when you were recruiting him, is there a moment where you kind of saw his talents and you realized, hey, this kid is probably good enough to play at the high major level while you were recruiting him to UNLV? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, more than his play, it's who he is as a person. It's it's uh, my belief in him as a man, as you know, his competitive spirit, knowing what he's about, knowing how he's worked in his journey. Um, I'm always going to believe in people that have that passion, have that fire, and then work to match what those goals are. And, and he's a tremendous worker. So proud of him for, for what he did here and, and how he continues to climb. And I'm going to be on his, I'm on his butt tomorrow to keep getting better. TJ, the Robert Jones that, that we're seeing now, I think is fair to say a lot different than the Robert Jones when he first got here. From an improvement standpoint, how much further can he go? Yeah, he's he's going to continue to climb because of how he works and, and how much he cares. Like he, that jersey means a lot to him. Being a cyclone means a whole bunch to him. Um, his teammates mean a lot to him. The leadership and how he sets the tone every single day. Um, I, I think Rob is, you know, by many been undervalued for a long time, and he's showing everyone. That hard work every day does pay off, and that it's it's setting the tone not only for him but our team. Um, when you have a guy on your side that you feel like if a fight went down that you got the toughest guy on your side, it makes everybody feel a little bit tougher, and Rob brings that to our team. So it's appropriate that Big Rob energy fits, and it was awesome to see him engaging with our fans when he came out there before that last media timeout. There was a sequence late in the second half where you guys got a turnover, come down, swing it around the outside. Keyshawn drives, goes behind the back for a layup for Rob, or excuse me, Trey. Is that the sequence of your guys' dreams to, to execute at that level? Yeah, the behind the back pass we could debate. Um, <laughs> but the completion of the, yeah, the completion of the play and the finish in the play, uh, it's one of those things as a coach, like, all right, if we're going to do that, it better work, and it did, so you're, you're great with it. But, yeah, no, the, I, I think what you're seeing from our group is that guys enjoy making a play for a teammate, and that's such a contagious habit to have, and um, that's something we're going to continue to do because we have a lot of guys that can make plays and guys that can finish, so that's probably as you know, great of a possession as there is in the game because you have everybody involved, and then – you know, for some others, maybe that flare of excitement. Um, I was just happy we finished the play, but um, we'll continue to share the ball and play for one another. Yeah, just exactly. Beyond that, um, what is there anything out there to critique tonight? I mean, this was about as perfect a game as I've seen you guys play this year. Yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was a full 40 minutes. I mean, look, there's certainly times early where they get a three that we don't love, and there's definitely times out of the last media timeout where they're pressing full court, and you wish uh, we'd have done a better job handling that to, to not have a, a turnover. So there's, there's always going to be things from our end that we feel like we can keep improving on. But if you look at the full 40 minutes, the focus, the effort, the intent, the execution of a game plan, um, our guys, you know, did the job and they stayed locked in. So super proud of them for that. This is the third time this season you guys have scored 90 points. I don't think in your first two years you guys were able to eclipse that. What's kind of been the switch and really with the veterans as well? Well, look, more than anything, you know, the ability to play with pace. We still have to keep our focus on getting stops and our defensive intent. Because when you turn people over, when you get long rebounds, it affords you the opportunity to play in transition. And now the court's more open, and we have more opportunities to score early. So our guys are continuing to earn that trust. you know. But like with freedom comes discipline. So there's more freedom to make those plays. There also has to be more disciplined understanding when that play is there and when it's time to run offense. Um, you know, Mostly we're, we're understanding it, and we need to continue to keep our focus there. Between uh, Trey and Rob's playing the post tonight and your defense forcing uh, 19 turnovers, I think it was a season high for Iowa that they committed. What impressed you more between those two things, at least from your expectations this morning to how they played out? Yeah, I mean, to me, the most impressive thing is how Trey and Rob set the tone for the game from the start. The way that they established the physical play, 
uh, on both sides, the way they established, we're going to go right at the rim, and we will not be denied. We're going to finish plays uh, at the foul line. We're going to score at the goal. Uh, those guys as leaders, you know, in their last year of eligibility, uh, shoot, Trey's been here. He's, you know, two and a half, you know, going on his third year. Rob's been here three years. So um, you want guys who understand the importance of a game like this, understand the pride and the passion you have to play with to set the tone. So those two guys and their effort impressed me the most. Thank you.